Probably. 94.2. All right, well, I just wanted to finish up on this college scandal with the most obvious irony, and that is that these kids are being taught to, uh, they, they're trying to enter college and they're learning to cheat. So it's sort of uh, by the people that, that are meant to be their guides in, in, through youth, their parents. And so it's, it's very ironic and uh, it's very sad because I honestly believe that if you learn to be a cheat, uh, well, you won't prosper. <laughs> I, I believe that, mo I would guess that most of the parties involved, especially the parents, rationalized the cheating by deciding that the, the process for getting into college is so inherently unfair that it might as well go ahead and cheat. Which is, it's not that it's, un that's, that's a rationalization. It's not unfair as much as it's like just super, it's very complicated and it, it's, it's, it's just a, a ridiculous mess in that now that you can apply to for everything online, most of the highly qualified kids apply to at least 12 colleges, which drives down admission rates at the most elite colleges to under 5%. And so it's a mess, but it being a mess doesn't justify, you know, you know bribing your way in. So do you think it's harder, Rick, for kids who are forced to go to public school where there's like a ton of illegal immigrant kids there? And well, all right, what's, what's but, unfair is... But let me finish, let me finish. And okay. that, so you have wealthy parents who can send their kids to private schools and get a really good education. And so then when it comes down to taking these SAT scores, SAT, there aren't, aren't the, the, the poor people at a huge disadvantage? Yes. Yeah, they are. In that, it's it, applying for college is extremely complicated, and and if you're going to a public school that has a crap counseling department or no counselors at all, you're not going to learn about studying for the SAT. Nobody's going to read your admissions essays. You know, you've got among rich families, and also your you your maybe your mom is maybe single and she's just working two jobs to try to, she's not going to have time to work with you on this stuff. You know, our kid was lucky in that, you know, she comes from an intact family. We've got good research skills to figure out how, what to do about college. You know, well-to-do families will spend, you know, 10 grand or 20 grand or more on, so on a private saying? college counselor who so will walk the kid through the whole process. So what you're saying is you're for school choice? No. I'm just saying that the process is a mess and it is unfair to people who, you know, lack the advantages that some people have, even if the people with advantages don't cheat. Well, uh, weirdly, I have actually taught at four colleges, real degree colleges, and I have to say, uh, I came away feeling like it was all a waste of time. The going to college. Uh, yeah, and that if if you really wanted to learn something, you could give the money, the the thirty or forty or fifty or sixty thousand dollars, two hundred thousand, to the expert in the field, and he could come and tell you what's what's important or and teach you, and you'd learn more. It, you could probably look up the top uh, person in a lot of these fields and say, look, I'll give you the money and you just teach me one day a week and you, you'd learn more. So Yeah, but you wouldn't get laid. You, you, you wouldn't be at a college for four years with attractive, drunk people. Well, that you could... That's what junior college is for. <laughs> no, junior college is, you're not, there are no dorms at junior college. You need dorms. Well, all right, so let's let's death, uh, death penalty. Yeah. So r recently, uh, the governor of California realized that he could commute the census, the commute the sentences of people on death row 
the governor always has that ability in, in, of a state. So he decided to commute all of them, or at least not, not enact the death penalty. Now, because what I've heard is the next governor can put it back. But um, that's what we got in California. So as a result, 750 people that were going to be executed are not going to be executed so long as the Democrat is in charge of the governor's but, house but to, in California. But to be real, most of those 750, even if the death penalty was still in effect, would die before they would get executed. Because it takes frickin' forever to it, execute somebody. It, it certainly does, but I have to say, I heard um, somebody going over who these people are that... Yeah, they're all, they're all horrible, if they're indeed they are they, guilty they, of what they... Right, but, but a lot of them, uh, some of them have actually confessed. For example, uh, the dating game murderer is uh, actually confessed to two murders and is suspected of murdering a hundred women. And he uh, was going to be executed, now he isn't going to be. Um, and another thing I wanted to point out is that the anti-death penalty people will read a statistic and say that some huge percentage of people that are executed were actually innocent. And the problem is it turns out that people will lie about these statistics. And some people say, no, there's no real evidence that anybody that's been executed oh, come on. was innocent. No, anybody, because... anybody in the past, say, 25 years with modern forensics. Oh, well, there's so, significant I mean, doubt I mean, about it. May, maybe maybe in, the, in the 1930s. No, no, there was a guy in the 90s, the fire pattern murder guy, the guy who was executed because they said that uh, the burn patterns on the floor pointed to an accelerant and um, there, there's, and then it turns out that the, 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 the fire expert wasn't an expert and that the burn patterns were consistent actually with a space heater that malfunctioned and there have been, I don't know how many, uh, you know, wrong executions there have been, but certainly some in the last 30 years. Well, my point is that um, it's, it gets less likely every, every year, and it's, it's, some people say it's one out of, look, uh, it just depends on who you talk to. Some people, Gavin Newsom was saying that he believed one out of 10 was innocent. Uh, some people say none are innocent. And I, I lean towards the none, and I'll tell you why. Because by the time somebody gets to the point where we've decided we're going to execute them, things have gone real bad. In, in other words... Uh, yeah, they it, have. I'll it, agree with you there. Yeah, it's not a situation where we're just, oh... You know, you you, uh, you, uh, you, you you we think you did it. We're going to execute. No, we're going to disagree it's, about it's what things going real bad means. What things going real bad usually means when I say when I say that I'm saying there are like lots of eyewitnesses, or it was on camera, or uh, the guy confessed. Or they found blood all over him with the yeah, right except, DNA. I mean, so, in other words, it's very, very clear that he did it. Well, that's one set of things going bad. And, and that, Another and that, set and of things going bad, though, is having a, a public defender who sleeps through your trial. And cops who, only, who like, take the word of a paid informant and... You know, um, there, there are things that could go wrong, Rick, but I'm saying the, the death penalty is reserved for particularly obvious cases, I have to no, say. No, it's reserved for particularly heinous crimes that are not no. necessarily obvious. Yeah, I, uh, I... Okay, we'll have to... Since neither of us have all the cases, all yeah. 750 sitting in front of us... Yeah, what did Gavin, why did Gavin Newsom say he was... His, he was, his argument... His, this is the, I actually heard him speak. His argument was this, that he believed something like one in ten were innocent. 
or, or one in 30. Uh, so he believed that if he let all 750 be executed, that something like... Two dozen? Like, at least, yeah, a few dozen people would have been innocent, and he felt it would have been his fault. He wasn't so, talking about cost, because it's, it's a lot more expensive to execute nah, people. It's, it's not cost. It wasn't about cost. It, it was purely uh, his ethical concern. Mm -hmm. And the problem is, is that it is a, uh, it's not a democratic thing that he did. In other words, it, it's unprecedented for a governor of a state to simply overturn the will of the people. Well, was the death penalty a result of, a, of an election at some point? Yeah, we, we've had two or three ballot measures uh, where the people of California were able to, to institute the death penalty. And they tried to overturn it, and we, and we said, no, we want the death penalty. And what's happening is Democrat governors uh, in, the, in the past couple of years, I believe, very, very recently, have decided, like all Democrats, that, that they don't really give a shit what the people think. They don't really, all that dem democracy stuff doesn't sit well with them. And so they're just going to use their power as a governor to pardon everybody or, or commute the death sentence of everybody on it. When was They're, the last time somebody got executed in California? I don't know, but we're carrying them out. We're not... No, we're, I don't think we've executed somebody since I've lived here, and I've lived here since 89. No, no, no. We, I, 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 there, there was a time when there was a big stall on it, and it, it had to do with the question of cruel and unusual punishment. Yeah, because so, a lot of drug so, companies right. won't sell drugs to if they know that the drugs are going to be used to kill somebody. Right. So, well, so the problem is, is that there have been many, many legal challenges, but we've been slipping through executions. I mean, uh, you know, uh, it may be that it, they have to wait five years. No, to it's get more like 20 another. years. People die before a if lot. If you want, we can look it up. But let's do that. Let's just let's do that because i got to break the closing. All right. All right, 94.3, so here's the death penalty stuff. It's been more than 13 years since California executed somebody. In the past 40 years, California has only executed 13 prisoners out of a total death row population of 746, which is a rate of less than 2%. And this thing with this site, which is anti-death penalty, but they say that the cost of executing these 13 people was four billion, which is a third of a yeah three hundred million dollars per person. So it's expensive, all the legal stuff and but so anyway, you want to move on? All right, let's let's move on. All right, what's the next thing? Um, the last we talked, you we were talking about um, there's been destruction of art. Or something? Oh yeah. Well. Um, I guess one of the things I've been arguing about on, on Facebook, I found out, is that most Democrats like the idea of destroying art. Um, they, uh, the more civilized say that they think art should be removed. But uh, in general, um, it started with the destruction of the, uh, the uh, Southern uh, generals. Uh, monuments, but it it uh, as Trump predicted, it's gone on to Columbus, and uh, there's a lot of destruction of Columbus. Uh, any kind of Catholic uh, saints, uh, the uh, Father Junipero Serra, uh, who uh, brought uh, uh, the missions to California, damaged. Um, Democrats uh, had voted for the removal of uh, just a variety of historical figures. Um, uh, there was a medical doctor that had cured uh, the founder of gynecology. Was uh, his statue was removed because Why? he because he did uh, a lot of experiments on slaves. 
slave women, which, which were extremely painful, but, but apparently cured a lot of them. Uh, but uh, they were, it, was a, it was technically coercive, so they're mad at him. All right, so um, Columbus, but, but actually, I, I made the connection that um, public, uh, public displays of, the, uh, of the, uh, the three wise men uh, coming to celebrate uh, the birth of Jesus have also been removed uh, Where? from public property. More than one set of wise men? Well, um, okay. My argument was that there used to be beautiful uh, displays of uh, the birth of Jesus uh, around the country, but particularly in, in Santa Monica, overlooking the ocean. You mean nativity scenes? That's the word I was looking for. Anyway, uh, they had a lot of those. Uh, they, the Democrats took over the city council in Santa Monica, and they got rid of those. Um, they are working on getting rid of Columbus everywhere in the country. Uh, the South uh, ha is getting rid of uh, all, a lot of their uh, Confederate uh, memorials. Um, and I was just thinking, Democrats do not like public art, uh, unless it's somebody they pick. For example, the Democrats don't have much to say about statues of Marx or or Lenin. Those are safe. Well, where, now, where in the U.S. do you have a statue of Marx or Lenin? Berkeley, Actually, Berkeley. Really? Yeah, yeah. I mean, at De uh, Seattle. Uh, not, a, you know, not sitting in a park. You don't have yeah, Lenin yeah. standing in a park. Yeah, There's I mean, no I mean, fucking way you have Lenin standing in a park in Seattle. Uh, now, what you may have, I've seen this, is so you have the fall of the Soviet Union, and then these statues and these busts, these monumental, you know, great Soviet era, you know, propaganda fucking busts. Like somebody buys one of those on Etsy or eBay and then they put them up in their coffee house ironically. Like here's this, not because they're celebrating Lenin, but because there's this big head. Yeah, I know that's what you want to believe. No, like one time, but like what? I know a guy who buys all sorts of weird shit on, on eBay. And I, the I, weirdest I believe you, but I'm just saying that there are people that have put up statues of I own it. But let me just say this. This United is off States. the subject. But right. one time, um, my buddy found a taxidermy clown on sale on eBay before they prohibited the sale of like organic, of you know, things that came off of people. There was was this, this a real person? A real dead clown who'd been preserved. It's against the eBay rules now, but you could buy that guy. Are you allowed to display a public dead person? I guess so. I don't, yeah, probably. I mean, yeah, uh, you go at, at LAC, not LAC, or whatever. I mean, you know, they have those bodies in motion thing where they have the flayed. That's and, right. They're all dead. The plasticized versions of people. All Absolutely. Stripped. Yeah, so. Anyway, um, you know, I mean, I, I agree with you to some extent. And here I'll sketch it out. I agree with you that a lot of these statues are really good. They kind of come from the golden age of people making really good statues. Right. However, you know, a lot of the statues are symbols of oppression. That a lot of the Confederate war memorials went up during the Jim Crow era, and the subtext was, "You watch yourself, boy." You know, um, but well, that, I take issue with that. Um, actually, a lot of them. That's the, what the liberals were saying about it. But if you do the math, a lot of these statues were put up when the Confederate soldiers had become old men. Yeah. And so it was sort of a thing that their community had done to celebrate the, the men that they had sent forth to fight for their community. Sure, but I mean a statue can stand for more than one thing. You can have more than one deal on the agenda. You can be celebrating a bunch of 90-year-old men. At the same time, it's also the, uh, the peak time for lynchings across the South, the yeah. 1920s. Yeah, but the, there, there was worse things than the lynching. There was the actual imposition of slavery. Uh, the problem is, is that what I try to explain to people is that you can't get rid of your history. Uh, 
you, you can, but I'll give you an example. In uh, Hungary, the person that founded Hungary was Attila the Hun. And everyone knows that Attila the Hun was a very bad man, but there are statues of him all over Hungary because he was the founder of their country. So, um, and, and in fact, uh, there were northern generals that ended up doing things just as bad as Robert E. Lee. Yeah, yeah, except that they were doing it in service of, of the Union. Right, but let me give you an example. One of the greatest statues in America is a statue of William Tecumseh Sherman in New York. Now, a lot of people don't know this, but William Tecumseh Sherman was the man that created the policy that wiped out Total war. more Indians. Oh. No, Indians, Native Americans. Because what happened was, after he made the South howl with his, his doctrine of total war, war on the civilians. He burned his way. He, he burned a swath of total destruction to punish the South across Georgia. Right. And, and burnt down and in South land. Carolina. And, uh, and he was a... He, he, his belief was that you destroy the civilian support of the army, that, that, and that way you defeat the nation. But, uh, yeah. but, but what happened was, after the war, he was our, one of our best generals, so they put him in charge of fighting the Native Americans. And he, what he did to the Native Americans was even worse, because he figured out that the Native Americans were completely dependent on the buffalo. So what he did was he brought every uh, hunter, in a sports hunter, out uh, in America, out in the West, and they killed, they almost wiped out every last bison. And so the Indians starved to death and died of exposure because uh, they used the skins and they used the beef uh, the meat, and so the Indians were, were wiped out by more by that than almost anything else. That they, they, they were wiped out by people think he might have killed 80% of them, of uh, the Plains Indians, by doing that. I had no idea. Yeah, and, and so um, the other thing that wiped out Indians, we now know, is, is disease that the white man brought with them. But more than anything else, Sherman was responsible for these mass numbers of deaths. All right. So, so the point is, is that are we going to get rid of Sherman, Columbus, uh, Jefferson because he kept slaves, well, George Washington, and by the way, Trump even mentioned. What about Washington and Jefferson? Yeah. So I get a question for you. Yeah. I'm not saying that this is a perfect solution or that anybody would even do it. Would you be okay with keeping the statues in place and putting up like double plaques, like the good shit they did plus the bad shit they did? Yeah, I, 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 I'd love that. To be honest with you, um, if it was a plaque that, that contained huge, vast amounts of information Well, you could do video plaques. Lives. You could do video, you know, displays where, you know, here's the shit on, you know, no, that'd be great. I, 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 uh, I, I think the more information, the better. But they're not doing that. They're just getting rid of them. Well, they so, should. All right. Hey, everybody, put up plaques. You know, you, you know, it's simpler than whatever. Else. Anyway. All right. So, what was the other topic we were going to? What's talk about? next? The veto. You want to talk about the veto? Yes. Okay. Right. What's your opinion on the veto, Ray? Uh, well, I mean, he's got the right under the Constitution to veto shit that doesn't have a two-thirds majority, two majority. I think the interesting thing is that finally some Republicans uh, actually voted against the uh, National Emergency Proclamation. So the final vote um, in the Senate for the, on the measure to say, no, it's not a national emergency and you can't have your money because it's up to Congress to allocate money. That vote was 59 to 41 in, in favor of no national emergency. Um, so you know, close to a dozen Republicans did not vote Trump's way, though you need 67 out of 100 for him not to be able to veto. But of course he's going to veto the thing that says he can't spend money on the wall. 
Right. So, I mean, that's so that's what's going to happen. He's going to veto it, and now everybody, all my media say, now it goes to court to see whether he can actually take money from all these other things to pay for the wall. I think eight billion dollars worth. Well, um, I I'm actually. Uh, getting to the point where I actually think that the president has, we shouldn't have to keep going back to the court to decide what the president can do because then the president is underneath the court. So uh, I'm of the opinion that Trump should be throwing his weight around a little bit more than he's been doing. Uh, and, and let people say, well, look, wh why can't the president uh, tell the court what to do? He, I mean, they're supposed to be co-equal branches. So, uh, but as far as uh, a state of emergency, uh, I saw an interesting statistic. When they built a wall in, in the San Diego area, illegal immigration was cut 95%. So walls do work. And the other thing I found out is that um, since the Democrats brought in this fake asylum thing, if you're a kid or a child, we're only sending back 3% of the children. So if you're a child and you manage to make it over the border into the custody of the uh, American authorities, only 3% will ever be sent back. Uh, so it, we are definitely getting floods. Uh, we had a record month last month, 76,000 illegals poured over the border. Um, we are looking at a record year because what's happened all -time is... All-time record or just... Uh, it, it could be an all-time record, but we're on pace to beating all the past, say, 15 years. Like, it's a it's a Well, because they had huge years spike. in the early, to, right at the it, turn of the century. It's, it's a real spike. And the thing is, is that the, um, it, it turns out that the Democrats have given the illegals a great idea, and that is if you come with children, then uh, they, they can tie up the Republicans in court uh, with your kid. Uh, they can tie up ICE, they can tie up the authorities. So the Democrats got that idea across to the uh, South Americans, the, the Latin Americans, and as a result, the numbers are spiking dramatically of, his, of uh, Latin Americans that are bringing families and supposedly kids and supposedly people seeking political asylum. So if we, don't, uh, if we don't have an emergency right now, I don't know what an emergency would be. Uh, to me, this is as clear a, 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 a definition of an emergency uh, as anything I've ever heard of. And it seems to me that it's actually a military emergency too. Because a country uh, has a military to defend its borders. Well, one reason... And since Trump is the commander-in-chief, which, which is a military position. He is the commander of all armed forces. That's what commander of chief, chief in chief refers to. If he deems it necessary to use a wall to stop this, what he calls an invasion, and I agree with him, then I, I don't know how it could possibly be illegal. All right, one reason that the Republicans who abandoned Trump on this issue did so, or at least they've stated, is they don't want to the next time we have a, dem a president from the Democratic Party, they don't want that president to be able to declare a national emergency around climate change. Um, now, yeah, the numbers have been spiking, and I, I don't know if I buy that it's an emergency, but it's certainly more of an emergency now than it was a year ago when the numbers were much lower of people coming over. Um, though I will say, you know, people used to say, you know, what has Obama really done? Obama had all the house, both houses of Congress and the presidency for his first two years, which is not exactly how it went, but still. He had almost a supermajority in the, in the Senate, except for Franken, who took along. So, but it, this is Trump's main issue. 
the wall. He's been president for nearly 26 months, and he hasn't built one extra mile of, of fencing or wall. I believe he has, but I won't quibble. All right, so that, that I mean, geez, it's, it's, he's not good at getting shit done. Well, it's because he was facing opposition from Paul Ryan. It turns out that Paul Ryan, every step of the way, was thwarting uh, Trump. He was actually, Trump wanted to release important information about uh, the Justice Department and, and, and FBI colluding with Hillary, but it was Paul Ryan that stopped him. And, so why was Paul Ryan doing that? Well, we don't know, but we know, I know for a fact that Paul Ryan thwarted his effort to stop illegal immigration, and I know why. Because years ago, before this was a big issue, um, God, it must be 15 years ago, I remember hearing Paul Ryan, a new congressman, saying that he was, he, he, sure, 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 illegal immigration is a problem, but I have to worry about the growers up in Wisconsin, I think he's from. And I, that stuck in my mind. It may not have been 15 years ago, but I remember very early on thinking, what a strange thing for a person to say that they would sell out their country for growers. And that was before he ran for vice president. It was a long... So, so from I've always known that he was in the pocket of the growers. And apparently, he, you know, when you bribe Paul Ryan, boy, he's... He carries out your, your, uh, what you bribed him to do. And so he stopped, uh, he stopped Trump from building that wall for the two years that, that uh, he had the majority in the House. Well, I don't know. Let's move on to something else. What do you got? We have uh, climate change. All right, let's talk about climate change. There's been, like, more and more stuff comes out that, that indicates that shit is more dire than we would think going about our daily lives. I think the latest thing to come out is that unless we have a way to do negative emissions, unless we come up with a technology that actually eats CO2, that it's inevitable that there will be a nine degree Fahrenheit uh, increase in temperature, which is freaking long. I don't know what over what time period, but I assume over the next century or so, but that's freaking a lot. Um, are you still a guy who says that climate change might be good for stuff? Um, actually, this was, was interesting, and I, I have to give credit to Rush Limbaugh on this, because I hadn't thought about this. Um, if you've been living in California, you know that the big deal among the Democrats is that we have a drought, we have a drought, we have a drought. And this year, um, we, we were... It, it was like a monsoon here. The, the uh, California was like, uh, I don't know, a, a Javanese rainforest or something this year. It got a lot of rain. And as a result, the, um, there is no longer a drought. Uh, they, they, they have to admit we're not in a drought anymore. Now, that wouldn't be significant except for one thing. All of the computer models that were being used um, predicted, the, the, the climatologists or whatever, predicted from computer models that California would simply be in a drought forever and that the state was basically going to uh, choke to death. Uh, and this was all based on these same computer models that are predicting that the world's going to come to an end because of global warming. And, and Rush Limbaugh pointed out, gee, if the computer models about the California drought were wrong, how do we know that the computer models about global warming aren't equally wrong? And, and it, believe me, qualified scientists, good computers. Um, so I, I don't buy it, Rick. I don't buy it. Yeah, I think you should. And, and furthermore, I wanted to talk to you about the Green New Deal. Well, hold on. Before we go on to that. Oh, okay. Like, 
All right, so we do get a bunch of water. I know how much water rain we get because part of my house floats. Okay. When we remodeled our house when we moved in 20 years ago, we put a second floor over just the laundry room um, without reinforcing the foundation apparently. And now that little part of the house, seven feet by 12 feet, uh, its level changes by about half an inch depending on how wet the soil is. So it's a big freaking pain in the ass. The soil dries up, that, that part of the house sinks. Then we get rain and the soil puffs up and the, anyway, it did, no big deal. But um, what is a big deal yeah. is the, the pine beetles. That as, Calif as every place gets warmer, in California, you have the pine beetle territory moving north and then they eat, the, eat our frickin' trees. Um, and so we get up with a lot of dead trees because the, it's warm enough for the pine beetles to have moved you know, hundreds of miles nor beyond their normal or their former normal you know, ecosystem. And uh, you're gonna, we're going to get our trees eaten? No, we are. We've got a shitload of dead trees. Millions of dead trees in California's forests. Well, um, we better manage them instead of listening to the uh, environment. Yeah, all, right, now, all right, so talk about Green New Deal. Well, um, I keep mentioning this. Republicans keep saying this to Democrats. And nobody says a word about it. I, I've apparently the Green New Deal involves getting rid of uh, meat consumption because the cow toots. All right. See so what your your comment is based on a facetious comment in some really early draft of the Green New Deal. It well, says, actually, no. Before you say that, because I thought so too. I thought this can't be real. Nope. It turns out that there are environmental uh, regulatory agencies that are going in to the, uh, the ranches where they have these cattle and they're trying to control the farting. Well, it's not the farting, it's the burping, starting. it's the burping. Cows create more methane via burp, or release more methane via burping than farting. Okay. Well, they're really starting it. So, uh, 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 and for, uh, so, so this is a real thing. They, they really are going to try and control cow uh, emissions. Well, you can't control cow emissions. You could probably feed them something different and create less little, but cows eat grass. Grass, you know, when you digest it, it releases. So this leads to the statement that, uh, well, nobody said this in a few weeks because it was just too goofy. It was somebody said it at CPAC, not Sebastian Gorka, but uh, I don't know, so who was it? Was it, what's his name, sloppy guy? Wears multiple shirts? Miller, not Miller, not Miller. Who's the guy? You know who I mean. Unshaven guy who used to work in the White House? Anyway, he said that the... Uh, Bannon? Yes, he did, I think it was Bannon. So one of those guys said that the Democrats are coming to take away your hamburgers. Yeah. But, and I... I was, we were going to talk about it, but we just ran out of time. I want, but anyway, the deal is what's going to take away people's hamburgers is not legislation. It's going to be the market in the future. In that uh, raising beef cattle is extremely expensive. Can you say up straight, kind of arch your back? Yeah, not, not quite that much. Okay. That's perfect. Okay, so what's going to happen is scientists and, and other people are going to come up with meat substitute that as the price of you know cattle based beef you know keeps rising you know people are going to eat fake beef and other kinds of, of protein that's going to end up being cheaper than cows okay and you know, there may be, I doubt, you know, this is America. I doubt that there will be legislation to, to recover, you know, to add like a surcharge to beef to cover beef's carbon footprint. That's just not what America does. Well, no, that is what America does because America 
is always in getting involved in, regulate, or in regulating junk food and, and uh, fast food and yeah, the food we, we give to our kids. Yeah, but we also subsidize farms. There's no way that we're going to add an extra tax on beef. Like well, ethanol is well, kind of well, half a scam in that the, in the, it actually costs more energy to get energy back from raising corn, and that's what ethanol is made from, than it would be to, to just not grow the frickin' corn. There's a, farmers are, are highly subsidized. There's no way that anybody is gonna slap a tax, of a burp tax on cows. Well, the problem is we go back to that same thing we've had so many times, you and I, where you say, well, there's no way that the Democrats are for open borders, and there's no way that the Democrats are for confiscating guns, but it, it turns yeah, out... Yeah, because nobody's ever fucking confiscated it, a gun no, in no, all the fucking it, it history. It turns out that they do legislate these things. When they say they're going to get rid of meat consumption, you can bet they're going to legislate Nobody's that. going around saying they're going to get rid of meat. Somebody made a joke in, in the initial draft of the Green New Deal. One thing about the Green New Deal is it's not a fucking deal. Because it has no details yet. It has well, a bunch yeah, what of... what about getting rid of air flight? They... What, if, what, about, what about getting rid of all uh, uh, flights on airplanes? You, that's not going to happen either. What will happen is that it will get more and more expensive. Now, that's one thing where a but lot of countries... Is it, why is it the government's responsibility to get involved? Well, it's, it's none of their goddamn business. Yeah, but if... Like, gas... Fuel in America costs like half as much as it costs in Europe, because in Europe they try to collect the for the carbon for the co the environmental cost of of fuel, and we don't do that. But the market will handle some of this, and with regard to I mean, f airplanes are fantastically polluting, and they also spit out their pollution where it can do the most damage, which is high in the atmosphere, because a lot of pollution that's released closer to the ground falls to the ground where it can do less damage. But pollution that's released, you know, seven miles up in the air stays there for a very long time, gather, you know, gathering heat and adding to climate change. So yeah, I just read every year they, they do the world's best science fiction, and two of the stories in this year's volume dealt, uh, incidentally mentioned that in the future air travel will be fantastically expensive because uh, pe people in the future will, will have decided that they need to recover some of these hidden costs. So only wealthy liberals will be able to afford to fly? No, like well one story I read said you kind of had to get Travel approved. It, it'd be the, the it would be your worst socialist fear. So it would be the government thinking who can fly. Them. Yeah, but you needed it. He couldn't just fly to to spend the weekend in, you know, New Orleans at the Jazz Fest. You had to have a, a really good reason. So who's going to tell the people in the Super Bowl they can't have the Super Bowl anymore because people have to fly into the Super Bowl? Like, I don't know. I mean, this is fucking science fiction. Louder, louder, director. This, and the deal is this: this is science fiction. And this particular story needed this to happen plot-wise because it was a, a, a star-crossed lovers thing where, you know, if these two people were meant to be together but they couldn't be together because air travel was so heavily regulated, so, you know, that they needed that detail to, I, to make the story run. So I don't think it'll be that heavily regulated, but I do think, I mean, you know, like, it's ridiculous that I should be able to fly from here to Albuquerque for 19 bucks. I mean, I'll do it if I can get that deal, but that doesn't capture all the costs of that flight. Well, Rick, the, this is just one more reason that I hate socialists. But we don't have socialism. I can fly. You have no, it's none of your, it's not the government's business to regulate whether or not you can fly your plane. And, and, uh, but the deal is the government isn't coming after your cows. What's coming after your cows is that in the future, when we have a bunch of people who want to eat meat and can't afford it, uh, we're going to have really good fake meat. And real meat will be like a special treat 
or, you know, something that rich people eat. Well, I just want to say that uh... All right, stop the camera for a second. Stop. Rolling. All right, 94.4. All right. I just wanted to say that um, one of the reasons that uh, that its uh, energy is so less expensive in the U.S. is that for the first time in history, the United States is an exporter of oil. Mm -hmm. And that's partly due to Trump uh, opening up drilling wherever possible. Kind of. It's also but it's, natural but gas. It's, but it's also because of fracking. And so what's happened is the oil companies have, have made such technological strides that we now have enough oil literally for the foreseeable future. No one knows when it'll run out because we've now increased the supply so dramatically. Mm -hmm. So, and furthermore, believe it or not, they could be fracking in Europe as well. It turns out that, it, that, that, that many regions could, could be fracking uh, and that uh, we now uh, have more oil than Saudi Arabia, more oil than Russia. Uh, so um, it looks like oil is going to be with us. It will remain the cheapest and most efficient energy source. Uh, and the second thing I have to say is that Nowhere in the Green Deal does it uh, say anything about switching to nuclear power, which is the cleanest. Well, it should. Which is the cleanest method. But again, the New uh, Deal hasn't been drafted yet. It's just a series of aspirational statements. Well, no, but I, 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 have not, I have never heard a prominent Democrat say that, uh, All right, so that, that nuclear you. power was a great energy I'm going to agree with you. That's a problem. Okay. And, and yeah, that's, that's like so. You know, I have a lot of, of quibbles or beefs with conservatives, but one of the the beefs I have with Democrats is when they get all you know hippy dippy and they get afraid of vaccinations because some fucking guru doctor said some bullshit. You know, I, I hate anti science among liberals as much as I hate it among conservatives, and. There are ways to build reactors that are pretty frickin' safe. And yeah, that is, and like France does what, 60% of its, its power generation is yeah, nuclear? Right. something like that. Yeah, yeah. We quite, should, a, quite a few countries. Yeah, and GE has these like third generation reactors that actually eat nuclear waste. They run on nuclear waste. So, so the problem of what to do with the waste would be Reduced by the new generation of reactors. So, so yeah, I got, I got one more last. We got three okay. minutes. Okay, all right. One last director question for you all to answer. Okay, right. who are you going to put your your stock in for your family's future, the future of the, on a twenty seven year old uh, uh, hipster uh, AOC who's twenty nine and intelligent and and twenty seven who's a freshman who's a former bartender yeah. or on a president. Who has is a multimillionaire has been able to maintain his nose, created jobs for thousands and thousands and thousands of people in his career, has raised an amazing family, and is president of the United States. Who, how, who oh, are you how, going back to? how fucking dare you diss bartenders? I worked in bars for 25 years. Okay, Rick goes first. Go. All right, AOC, um, Alexandria, you know, um, she is really good at Twitter, and sad as it may be that is a major part of you know public people's lives right now and you know yeah she still needs to get educated about some stuff but really when people call her out about no, not knowing stuff she either comes back and and owns up to it or she comes back with the facts that show that she actually does know what she's talking about she pays her staff more than the minimum that she would have to and she gets a lot of credit, at least on Twitter. Where is okay. the, that's the, right? Because we're right. I, the oh, only man. the only public objection I ever made to Trump was that I was afraid he was going to pull out of Syria 
and leave our allies, the Kurds, to the tender mercies of the uh, Turks. Uh, and I was very happy to find that it looks like Trump uh, changed his mind about that and has done a lot of good uh, kind of sneaky things militarily that will protect the Kurds. So really, as far as I'm concerned, Trump has not made a single mistake. I, I, I'm, I'm astounded at how at every point he's done the right thing for the United States and I'm, I couldn't be more pleased. I wouldn't change a thing. And the other thing that impresses me is a mere politician would not have fought for this wall. But he's no politician. He's a man of his word. He wants that wall. And he's willing to just do whatever he has to. Uh, I've never seen a politician in my lifetime fight this hard for a wall or for something that was sort of not really terribly popular. It, the country's divided about it. But by God, he's fighting for it. And uh, I, have, I have nothing but admiration for him. Uh, there's stuff I like about Trump. He watches TV a bunch of, a lot. And he tweets like he's been lately he's been tweeting like 15 times a day. And um, anytime he's watching TV or tweeting, that's time that he's not like accomplishing shit. And that's good because a lot of the shit he wants to accomplish, I don't agree.